In this lecture, we're going to talk about two different cell types. Those cell types are called prokaryotes and eukaryotes. We will start with prokaryotes. The word prokaryote just means like first cell or without a nucleus. And so there's a couple types of cells that exist in the world that do not have a nucleus. One of those is bacteria, which are very, very common. And then the other are archaea. They're a little bit less common, but they are also single-celled organisms that do not have a nucleus. And they're often something called an extremophile, meaning they live in extreme environments, like someplace that it's very, very hot or very, very salty or very, very acidic. So those are both two, two different types of prokaryotic cells, so they do not have a nucleus. We're going to talk next specifically about bacteria. There are three different types of bacteria, and they're defined by their shape. Um, for this particular classification. So coccus just means berry, um, and then there are these little round bacteria, and then bacillus translates as little stick, so that's these little rod-shaped bacteria, and then spirillium are spiral shapes. You can see these are gently twisted or spiral shaped. So those are the three major shapes that bacteria come in. And then a lot of times they grow in colonies. So when they grow in pairs, it's called diplo. Di means two, so that makes sense. If they grow in branching colonies, they are called strepto. And so if you've ever heard of like strep throat, that's caused by an organism called streptococcus. And so that is how it got its name. And then the other type is staph or staphylo. If you've ever heard of a staph infection, um, staphylococcus is the bacteria that causes those infections. And so those names are what give rise to the classification or naming system we apply often to bacteria. A bacterial cell is less complicated than a eukaryotic cell, which we'll talk about in a minute, but it does have a few major parts. So there's usually a capsule around the outside of the bacteria. Within the bacteria, there's fluid called cytoplasm, and that contains a few things. The DNA is usually found in a circular form in bacteria, and it also has these little structures called ribosomes. Ribosomes are responsible for manufacturing proteins. And then they also oftentimes will have pili, and that's how they can send DNA to other bacterial cells or move. And then sometimes they also have a flagellum, which is a long tail that also helps them with locomotion. So here we can quickly review that vocabulary. So a flagella is a thread-like structure that helps the cell move. The cell wall surrounds the cell membrane and provides structure and support. The cell membrane controls what goes in and out of the cell. And the capsule, which goes around the outside of everything, provides protection for some species, but not all species, of bacteria. Within the bacteria cell, they have their DNA, which is how they pass genetic information onto their offspring. And there are also structures that are on the outside of bacteria called pili, and they can transmit DNA to other bacteria and help the bacteria move. Bacteria can actually be quite helpful. Um, if any of you have ever eaten yogurt or cheese or anything like that, it was probably fermented by this bacteria called lactobacillus. Um, and so that's what helps give um, cheese and yogurt kind of their tart taste. There's also bacteria that help organisms um, like plants with their roots. They provide nitrogen and those are called rhizobium. And then you also have a bunch of bacteria that live on your skin and inside of your gut. That's your indigenous microbiota. Um, sometimes it's also called your flora or your gut flora. And that is bacteria that helps you prevent um, infections from harmful bacteria. And it also helps with certain types of digestion of food and things like that. So you have tons of bacteria on your body and in your body, and it's normal for it to be there. That's not to say that all bacteria is helpful, because it's not. Bacteria can cause disease. Um, if you've ever heard of things like tuberculosis, and like we talked about earlier, staph infections, strep infections, those are all diseases that are caused by bacteria. If they get into a wound, they can cause infections. So bacteria are not always helpful. Um, to prevent bacterial diseases from taking hold, cleanliness is a huge help, you know, washing your hands, good sanitation, all that kind of stuff. We can treat a lot of bacterial infections with antibiotics, 
but not always. So antibiotic resistance is becoming especially a problem um, because anim, um, bacteria can develop the ability to resist antibiotics, meaning that the antibiotic cannot kill that kind of bacteria anymore. If the bacteria becomes resistant, it can, it can become untreatable. And so people can get an infection with a resistant bacteria and there's not a way for them to get well. So some of the diseases that have come become resistant to antibiotics include tuberculosis, meningitis, staph infections, things like that. So it's really important that if a person has to take antibiotics for an illness, that they take all of their antibiotics and not just half of their medication because that can cause more resistance. There are some other causes too for overuse of antibacterial products like feeding it to livestock and again not finishing prescribed antibiotics. Sometimes we overuse antibacterial soaps and things like that too. Um, so it's best to use soaps that are not antibacterial in your house and then um, encourage people to grow their livestock without low-dose low antibiotics in their feed all the time because they don't need it if they're not sick. And then make sure again to finish all of your meds if you have been given antibiotics for an infection. To prevent resistance, take all the drugs to completion if you're prescribed an antibiotic. Wash your hands regularly. Don't overuse antibacterial products. And also you can allow yourself to have a low grade fever. Not a high fever, but if your body temperature just goes up by one or two degrees, that's your body's way of trying to kill the bacteria without taking antibiotics. Now we're going to transition to eukaryotes. So remember, prokaryotes, like bacteria, lack a nucleus, and they do not have membrane-bound organelles. So they're a much simpler cell. Eukaryotes, on the other hand, have a nucleus and organelles. So you can see inside this eukaryotic cell, there's a lot more structures than the interior of that cell, and that's because it has a nucleus and organelles and is more complicated than a prokaryote. Eukaryotes can either be single-celled or multi-celled organisms. This is different from prokaryotes because prokaryotes are single-celled organisms exclusively. Eukaryotes can be single-celled organisms like the paramecium that we can see here, or they can be multicellular organisms like you and me, right? Um, multicellular organisms have different cells have for different tissues. So you can have tissues that are differentiated from each other. So if you were to look at the cells from your skin, for example, they look different than the cells in your nerves or in your muscles. Um, and eukaryotes make up several different types of kind of organism families. Eukaryotes can be plants, animals, or they can be fungal cells. Eukaryotes always have cells that contain a nucleus, at least when they start, and they, a nucleus always contains DNA. They also have structures called organelles, and they perform a variety of jobs to help maintain life's functions. So each organelle inside of the eukaryotic cell has a different job. There are several different um, things that differentiate eukaryotes and prokaryotes. So, Eukaryotes have membrane-enclosed nucleus, they have membrane-enclosed organelles, they have digestive vesicles, and eukaryotes can reproduce either sexually or asexually. Sexual reproduction just requires two parents, right? And asexual reproduction is like when a, bec or when like a paramecium divides and it divides from one cell into two cells. So that's asexual reproduction.